in Nigeria. But hurry, this exclusive ShopX TV offer is for a limited time only. So call now while stocks last. The following was a paid presentation from ShopX TV. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. All right, folks, I greet you. It's another Thursday in the land. Welcome to another program in the series, Journalist, uh, Journalist Hangout. I am Citizen John Susan. Now, today on the program, APC petitions National Judicial Council, NJC, seeks sanctions against judge who affirmed Ganduja's suspension, uh, just as suspended national chairman tells Kano government he is unshakable. Uh, later on, this one, Kaduna State House of Assembly probes Erufai's loans, directs committee to summon former governor. But... Uh, Let's tell you that I'm hanging out with Baba Jide Kolade Otitoju, BKO. I greet you. Welcome. I greet you, citizen. Good evening to our esteemed viewers. All right. We are joined by Chris Kende Mwandu, CK. I greet you, too. You go, citizen. I salute you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The team is ready. I hope you are. All right, to our first story. You know, the commendable interventions of the Borno State number one citizen, Professor Babagana Zulum, in the lives of residents of the state shall not go unnoticed. Governor Zulum has approved a 1.3 billion naira scholarship for 997 nursing and midwifery students who are indigenous students of the state. In addition to 201 million naira, that was disbursed as allowance to 2,010 students, making it a total of 1.5 billion naira so far approved. Only a father figure does this. He's, he's a really special person. You know, <laughs> I don't know where he finds the inspiration to do some of the things that he does, because when he does something, you see clearly that what he has done is surreal, what he has done is novel, what he has done is unusual. He's such an unusual governor, um, a history maker, and um, a record setter. Mm. Zulum is the first person, the first governor, to win the Zik Prize during his first term. Okay. Yes. Other governors usually win it during their second term when they will have done a lot of work. For people to say, ah, this person is really special. He won it during his first time. That's so he, he's been on his toes from day one? Yes. He's been showing that he has empathy, that he really cares for the people mm. for so long. Remember, even before others began thinking about palliatives, mm. palliative grains, um, um, subsidized uh, uh, transportation, this man, been yeah. doing it. Yeah. Reaching out to NYC, reaching out to a, a, a cross section of people. Now, the last time I went to Borno State, I saw an hospital, the Borno State University Teaching Hospital complex. It's one of the biggest hospitals I've, I've seen in this country. They are, it was under construction. And I'm like, where will they find the staff mm. to man such a gigantic edifice. edifice? This is 
prove that he's looking for the manpower that will man those people. Because okay. if people okay. cannot sponsor themselves to... I see where you're coming from. Yes. Yeah. And government steps in to assist. They will pull through school. That manpower <coughs> is <coughs> The biggest maternal care hospital in our country. I hear it's it's Yobe State. You see? Oh, we, Yobe, okay. Yes. Yeah. People don't know a lot of good things happening in the far north. Honestly, mm. until you until you travel. Yeah. Because I used to people used to tell me, ah, uh, this governor of Yobe State is a lazy man, he doesn't work, oh, he wasted his time. While he was even acting chairman of APC, some big projects were going on. And for the hospitals, you know, they signed deals with pharmaceutical companies here in Lagos to ensure that they are regularly supplied drugs. drugs. But no was the first to enter into mm. such a deal with pharmaceutical companies to guarantee the out of stock uh, out of stock syndrome will never mm. happen in uh, in uh, what was it called in Yobe State. Mm. So those two states, they are brothers. But I see a lot of positive things happening. Because where will you find manpower? I once asked the governor, I said, you are building the best primary school, primary and secondary schools in Nigeria. Some of those buildings look like Senate buildings of some universities. And I asked, can you find the right people? Because beyond simply looking for the right um, uh, infrastructure, you must find the right quality of instruction. Yeah. It's not enough to just build beautiful schools and all that. And I asked him, where will you find? He said, Jide, wherever I can find, I will, find, I will look for them. Whether they are Igbos or Yorubas, as long as they can get the job done, mm. I will hire. No, no, the, the, the man struck me the first time uh, he got to a particular school, met yes, a primary woman. School, yes, an Igbo woman. School, uh, and an uh, Igbo, Igbo woman. Yes. And uh, he, she was promoted and uh, asked, at this time, assistant headmaster. That, uh, you you are here this early? Yes. They said that woman for many years had been coming to school very early. You come before anybody, hmm. get to school before anybody. That's why it pays to be hardworking. And you are hardworking, be self-motivated. Don't yeah. And don't be uh, deterred by all kinds of distractions here and there. Because they you don't come. know the they day when that reward will come. Yeah. And that day, when Zulum paid that visit, the woman was there, and her reward came. She was promoted ne assistant uh, 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 head teacher of yeah. the school. Uh, uh, CK, you, you know, working like, and Zulum is on his second term, mm. but he's still working. Yes, he's still working. Um, <clears throat> but, Sidi, quickly before I go to that, um, let me just say this. Um, I just came back from Abuja yesterday, and... Um, I have um, a kind of a message from the from Niger Abuja. Yeah, from Abuja, from Nigerian police. They want to thank journalists and guards, especially. Oh, really? For the job we have been doing. Okay. We'll do, there are things we do here that we don't even think that are, people are watching. Yes. You'll be shocked. Even when we criticize at times, it's not, we're not criticizing because we want to criticize. Mm. It's for the betterment of Nigeria. Yeah. So I was invited to the Nigerian Police Award, which was held on Monday. And in the course of my interaction, I was shocked. Everybody was asking, what of the oh, journalists and In fact, the personal, uh, uh, the PSU, mm. who is like the chief of staff to the IGP. The IG. Yes. He said, that, see, see that, that is it. And they were even making reference of opening a program we had about a few days before that, talking about River State uh, Police Commissioner. Okay. Fortunately, Tunji Dusu won the best commissioner of police. Mm. And if we're just about 48 hours of that we mm. uh, this thing. So what I'm saying is uh, so congratulations to Commissioner to the, to the former RRS uh, yeah. commander in Lagos. I remember Yes, he, he, he beat all his colleagues. He spoke highly of him. He, yes, on that program. I didn't even watch it. It was there that I was told that there was a this thing. Yes, no. So what we do here is like we we just try to watch and project what is happening with this one. Where we see that uh, don't get it right, we get better. For them in the arm, um, for, okay, uh, for uh, oh, see, so they don't even see my picture. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's him being decorated by the by the senior president. Okay, and I told him that we'll be here to work anytime there's any kind of plot. We we say it here the same way we're commending. Yeah, that he's doing a good job. So congratulations, and to also say that 
people are watching us. So to the Nigerian police. Uh, Essentially, here we mold opinion. That is what you normally. That is what you normally. And allow see. those who take decisions. Exactly. So Do for them, share? for them to speak highly of journalist Angad, mm. it was uh, I, I was shocked. So congratulations. So and congratulations to us. Back to what we are talking about. Mm. You know, it, it, it baffles me that when you have leadership skill, when you have human sympathy, and you have humane mind, it shows oh, yeah. wherever you find yourself. Oh, yeah. It's not about the money. Anybody that have human nature in him, we always show it. It's not how much you are giving that determines how you'll be able to reach life. There are some people in this country that earns just 100,000 naira. If yeah. you see how many people with lives they reach. Mm. I personally know also, even, this, uh, even, uh, even yourself, I said, we know on a daily basis, people that call us every day, please, I need 5,000 naira. Mm. I need, that is, in our own little, we're also touching, we yeah. are just, uh, yeah. it's just that we don't make noise about it. But this particular governor, and this was a man that was projected to be a vice presidential candidate. Mm. You remember vividly? The man said, no. The job I'm doing, Bonnie, I've not Bonnie, for my he people. Said, I, he said, I prefer my I prefer boss. to just that job of uh, governor. He said, I prefer said. my boss. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, That's what he said. He said, uh, my boss. You see? It's important to make, he said, I prefer. My boss, who is now the vice president. He, 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 was he raised not, up his hand. Some other people will jump at it. Uh, yes, now. Like all these ones that are fighting Some their are fighting godfather this time. Godfather has already people made, made them. They made the they government. Are fighting. They are fighting. <laughs> we need to see. So uh, we need to commend this man for all what right. Children doing. will do the same thing to them. Ami, oh, Ami. Ami. You, you know, the Yorubas, Jide is familiar with this. The, 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 the Yorubas have a saying, yeah. profound. Yeah. Uh, it is it. It is. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. It is. I, I think uh, Professor Zulum is a contented governor. He thinks that because he achieved the, pro the projects that I did in 100 days. Some don't do it in years. There was some mm. secondary school did we went to in Bonu. I couldn't believe it. Mm. During the time of we went to one of those times we went to, I couldn't believe second, some private universities don't have those kind of. That's, the, that's what I said. Yes. Okay. Some private universities, as private, don't there have are some of primary schools hostel. now. That primary schools have been born. Yeah, some primary schools. Schools. It's, in the, it's in the mind. It, it's in the mind. No. Anything is possible. Yeah, Anything anything. Is Bono possible. is the best in Nigeria today in primary health care. It was World Bank okay. that uh, um, instituted a competition. Wow. They, they won good money. Some of what they won, they can, they can now divert it to give people pipe uh, bond water and all that. So people... Despite that is war torn, quote and unquote. All right, Professor... Baba Gana Zulum, we wish you Godspeed. Keep on doing the good job. Okay, then, to our next story. You know, in politics, any prolonged and bitter feud, rivalry, or contention is considered a political vendetta. The ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, has petitioned the National Judicial Council, NJC, demanding sanctions against Justice Usman Malam Naaba who granted an ex parte order suspending the national chairman of the party, Alaji Ganduje. Meanwhile, Ganduje, 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 the chairman, is arrogantly telling the Kano state government, we are here, unshakable, as he. <laughs> we are here, unshakable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing that word again. I, 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 immovable. <laughs> yes, we are here. No movement, no shaking. <laughs> yes, um, sincerely, what is happening to the national chairman of APC seems to be coming from two foods. One is the probe being instituted by the government of current government, mm. um, which I believe is most politically motivated anyway, because if you look at where they are coming from, there's nothing wrong, for goodness sake. Once you step down from the office, you must give account of what you did. Yeah. And you can be called any time to come and give an account. I don't have any problem with that. So those going to leadership should not just be, believe that, oh, once they leave office, that is the end. No, 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 it is not that. That's what is called accountability. And you know the way some of our governors do. Some don't even give a handover, give a handover note. <laughs> You'll be able to look for the handover yourself and look for the notes where there is. But the current situation as it were, apart from that, is also the problem that is also coming from his own local area. His word. His word. Mm. And I remember vividly when I was there last week, I was talking about the same thing. This was what happened during Adam Oshimori's time. Most often than not, when you look at these cases, as I say in my place that you see the small boy that is dancing by the bush. 
the person that is playing the drum is yeah, inside, inside the, yeah. is, is, is inside the bush. Mm. I don't know where this is coming from. Maybe Biko uh, in his course of this thing is going to. But my own problem with the issue of him or the APC petitioning the NGC, I don't know the reason why. Because a judge can grant uh, an expertise. Motion? Yes, he can. Okay. With without the presence of the person. Yeah. It can. He can on his own. It's his okay. personal will. That is what the law says. But he has a, a limited period for it, that. Okay. It cannot be in perpetuality. Normally, it's normally at times seven days, 14 days, at most maybe 28 days. But the problem we're having now, even our judges now are taking it further than that. Some keep it for about three months. Some take it to almost one year, which is very, very, it's an aberration. But it can be done. Mm. But the fact is that once that is done, it is for you now to go back to judge and present yourself and your case and the evidence. Convincing the judge that, sir, or oh, my lord, what you did must have been based on certain facts that you don't have. These are the facts, as it were. And he can be able to vacate it. Yeah. So whether there are the facts that, as far as I'm concerned, is for the national chairman to go back to that court and present his case as it were. But also you know that there's another court again, and that is where the contradiction comes. Another court again in Kano. Yeah. Has been able to give another motion restraining this other yeah. one. So I they, saw it. You, I'm sure you saw that. And that is pro the problem we're having in the judiciary. We are high court judges. Same high court judges will be coding contrary. Because once you give a, a, a kind of um, a judgment on a particular issue, the, what, the next thing is to do and have an appeal. You go to a higher court. But the way it is being, well, that is where I can only, if it's petitioning, if the petition is about the two judges giving contradiction, I agree with that. But that a particular judge give a, a, a party motion for me, personally, I don't see what he has okay. done wrong in that. All right. GJ, and, and, and also, uh, they say there are no desperate situations, but there are desperate men. Yes, I, <clears throat> I remember the CGN warning judges about this as party or dancing around there. You know, the problem with this party or dance is that it is not inclusive in any way because the, the victim, in inverted comma, mm. the respondent mm. will not be there when you will file it and secure an order. And that order may not so be in his... Uh, illegal, his legal... Uh, representative. Nobody, mm -hmm. yes, no, mm -hmm. he will not be represented mm -hmm. and you just go and get an order yeah. that may be injurious to that person. Mm. And what has happened in Kano is just a gangsterism is what happened in Kano. Where mm. an individual impersonated the uh, legal advisor of the word, oh, the Ganduje oh, word. Yeah, okay, yeah. Impersonated him, mm. put on glasses just like him, and mm. claimed that that uh, was his name. And it was the face of the uh, Mutineers. Mm. The person, the real person bearing the name, now mm. went to the party secretary to say, look, this is me. I have no hand in what is going on. It is clear that some people somewhere sat, Political sat up, mm. sat down, and devised a means of embarrassing this old man. That is the thing. I'm not a kind of person. I'm not even in position to assess Ganduji. Mm. But one thing you cannot say is that it didn't work in that place. You can accuse him of corruption, but you can't say it didn't work for the people because the achievements are there for all to see. If I was Constantly, any time they have a little opportunity, they want to show people what they've done. And the best, um, the best intersection in our country, road intersection, is in Kano, Otoro. Mm -hmm. The one named after Muhammad Buhari is of international standard. So people can see some of those roads would last a long time and walled on both sides. They even use, um, what's it called, um, tiles mm. to wall some of those roads. Beautiful roads. That is not the issue. Going back to what is going on, the fact that it succeeded with Oshomole does not mean that it will succeed with someone else. Mm. 
The reason is associated with Osho Mali, I talked about this last yesterday, because the president at that time okay. was not really disposed to Osho Mali yeah. uh, uh, chairmanship. He didn't step in. He didn't, he didn't think it was necessary to step in. He just left them alone. The governors wanted to deal with Osho Mali. They ganged up against him. You can see when there was a book long the other day, Osho Mali had to say to their faces, you know? So the president currently, Ashwai Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has not by his, um, what was it called, body language or by his pronouncements shown that he's tired of this old man. <laughs> and Ashwai Bola Ahmed Tinubu being a skillful and hands-on politician. You are not going to give him a national chairman that he does not approve of. Do, do you get the point that I'm yeah. making? There is no way you can, with him as the leader of the party, decide on who becomes national chairman of the party without the president's buy-in. People must understand that. This is just a bloody waste of time. A storm in a tickle because he's headed Nowhere. And God will spare our lives. I will come here and say, I hope you remember that I said, it. it's a waste of time. It is clear that from, that his political enemies, both outside and within the APC, they are looking for a way to get him out of the place. In the NMPP, the ruling party in Kano, mm. the agenda is clear. They, they have a hand in what is going on. No doubt about it. Even though because they denied it. They may deny it, but <laughs> those guys had been guilty of anti-party activities and all that. Look, I know politicians who sat outside of their party and were pulling strings in a rival party. Mm -hmm. Just that we can't mention some of them. Even in APC today, I know some of them who sat in APC and were pulling strings in a rival party. Do, they, do we not have a similar thing in rivers? Does an individual not control uh, the structures of two political parties at the same time? So what we are seeing is an attempt to embarrass the man so that once he's kicked out of office, they will now, they will be able to decamp, go and join APC. That is the plan. And as long as he's still there, there are some people that will not be able to join the they APC. They can't stand him. No, they, do, they are political enemies with him. They know that. No. There are people who can't be in the same party together. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. There are many like that. Who, there are some people that will never be in APC because Tinubu is there. Oh, yeah. There are people who will never be in PDP because Pambua is there. You understand? Oh, I think. Oh. Oh, no, there are some personal... Or oh, weekend. Oh, weekend. Uh, 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 <laughs> there are some personal issues. Do you see, for example, this Ganduji and uh, and uh, Kwankwa, so they can't work in the same party. It cannot happen. Not again. The same thing with Shekarao and Kwankwa. So. When Shekarao was forced to go and join Kwankwa, so, and they were making an issue out of it, that I was looking at them, I, except, I said, except if I no longer know anything about Kano politics. And that's where I worked for seven years. In the end, Shikara was forced to leave the party for him. In fact, the ticket, the senatorial ticket that they gave him, he surrendered it to tell you. Wow. You tell you how bad it was. Yeah, deep seated. Because Kwankaso refused to even concede positions to him. Some a big man comes into a party. You are supposed to do some power shining, no matter how little. That didn't happen. And the man didn't know what to tell his own uh, loyalists, his own supporters, that we have come into a party. We are we been thoroughly shortchanged. We we are, we we are left with nothing. So in the end, he, he, he had to leave. And despite the fact that they didn't even, nobody no there was nobody on the ballot. Mm. Over four hundred thousand votes still came from wow. him. In the senatorial no, election. No, no no wonder it, it said that politics is a zero sum game. The, the the way it is, the man will survive this thing. But judges abuse this expected thing. The one thing that shows just how corrupt the judiciary is, is this constant expertise. Expertise. The other day, somebody went all the way from Anambra State, a matter 
meant to be decided in Anabri, went to bringing Kudu in Tigawa to get another. <laughs> it's nonsense. And, and the man said, look, this thing is embarrassing us. Mm. You people should stop it, but they won't listen. That's why they are saying, let the, the court, the Supreme Court has ruled many times that the, these matters are the uh, affairs of political parties. Don't get and involved. Judges will not listen. All right. All right. Judges will not listen. All right, boy, let's go on a commercial break. We should be back. Please stay with us. The Federal Republic of Nigeria, with support from the United Nations Office of Counterterrorism, is set to host a two-day high-level African counterterrorism meeting in Abuja on the 22nd and 23rd of April 2024. The meeting, which is themed strengthening regional cooperation and institution building to address the evolving threat of terrorism, the meeting will bring together several presidents across Africa, 31 African member states that have been successful in preventing and countering terrorism and violent extremism. Distinguished attendees at the meeting will include His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, UN Deputy Secretary General Ms. Amina Mohammed, and National Security Advisor of the AU Commission Chairperson Mr. Mosa Faki and Under Secretary General for Counterterrorism Mr. Vladimir. Voronko, National Counterterrorism Center, Office of the National Security Advisor, announcer. I actually came to pay the money for the recruitment consultancy you did for my company. Uh, I took two million. I just hold on. <laughs> I now collect dollars. What? Yes. I don't understand what's happening to Naira these days. So, so it's going to be two million times today's exchange rate. Hey, 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 doctor, wait, wait, doctor, wait. Don't tell me you are one of those people who directly put pressure on the Naira and make it lose its value. You want to dollarize our economy and yet you pretend as if you don't know what is happening to the Naira. I've told you about how you abuse the Naira by spraying and stamping on it during your occasion. To deface and abuse the Naira as if it's not our national asset. But you can't take it easy. How? I will not take this. And neither will the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission task force on currency abuse and forex malpractice. Take it easy with you. They are coming for you. Desist from economic sabotage, or you will face the wrath of the law. New beginnings are always colorful. When we celebrate the start of life's journey, we marry in colors. With our proudly Nigerian Dulux paints, now available in any color. Express your world however you want it. Visit a Dulux color center to get any color instantly. Dulux, let's color. All right, folks, welcome back. Now let's go to our next story. You know, Robert Greene's seventh of the 48 laws of power states inter alia that get others to do the work for you, but always take the credit. Now, the Kaduna State House of Assembly commenced probing of con controversial foreign and domestic loans and grants as secured by immediate past administration of Malam Nasir El Rufai. In addition to this, the probe panel is mandated to invite the former speaker of the 8th and 9th Assembly and former Governor El Rufai. Recall that Governor Ubasani has lamented the huge debt burden left behind by the past administration. Uh, politics in the air. Yes, the, uh, they say this is the season. Well, um, it may not be totally politics being in the air. <laughs> What that governor, what Rubasani is going through, I have so much pity for him. Because during that um, town hall meeting, where we had stakeholders across the religions, um, we had uh, retired generals and all that, he gave what looks like the state of the state Union. of the state. State of address. The, state, state of the state address. address. Yeah. The state is gasping. Once they've done the debt uh, servicing for the month, they have literally Le nothing, nothing left. left. 
That story, he, he, he said he went to cry before the president. How can you help me? And the president said, these are foreign loans. What can I do? Hmm. Because if you have um, a wage bill of 5 billion naira, and after their servicing, you have 2 billion left, please tell me how you can come out of the problem. It wasn't like this in the beginning, but the devaluation of our currency, these loans were taken when our uh, uh, currency has changed to the dollar for 460. Okay. Now look at where we are. Uh, uh, when, they, when they had this um, town hall, the Naira was doing so badly, around maybe uh, uh, 1,900 or so. So, mm. The cost of debt servicing has really literally crowded mm, at great cost to the states mm. and the well-being of its people. This is where the frustration comes in. And then people then began to say, okay, what's going on? Let's even see what were the loans used for. That is what I think triggered. It wasn't the governor that said, look, I'm frustrated this and that. The people now said, okay, we, there's even a need. Did you read what um, the former NWC member, the act, uh, activist in politics, uh, Salio Lukman? Okay. Salio Lukman said, look, nothing should stop that we must find out what they use the money to do. Hmm. I mean, if we are going through this only, pain only, now, only let us see what did they even do with the money. That is how we found ourselves here. That's how we find ourselves here. That's what I'm saying. It may not just be, uh, okay, we just politics being played. The need to, uh, to ascertain the truth. Start establishing responsibility here. CK, yeah. Yes. Um, it's um, quite unfortunate what is happening. And that is a lot of so many governors that just came into power. That either took over from their so-called godfathers or our first-timers. Most of these states are really in, really in debt. Mm. Not just Kaduna. Go and see what is happening across the states. Even states beside us, yeah. Go and see what is happening in cross the states. The problem that the current go, um, governor raised that the same issue. Mm. How, the, um, how the former governor practically ran the state aground. So many loans. We are even talking about the states. What about the federal? Who said the time we down number that? I personally did not pity. <laughs> I, I have so much pity for the current president. Because most often they're not, maybe because it's his style of leadership. It's not the type that comes out and starts saying, if the president opens the book mm. and shows you the level of debt Nigeria is, that was incurred oh, yeah. from the last government. Oh, yeah. And that is what the central bank is still paying. We are talking about dollar up, dollar down, and the rest of them. If you know the level of both local and international debt that this current government inherited. Now you, you, must, you must service them. Ah, you must service them. It's a contractual agreement. Mm, right, like it or not. In law, in law, we say contractual agreement is an agreement that is signed, sealed, and delivered. Mm. Once that is done, your obligation, whether government is a continuum. You will not say, oh, it was my like in the case of, uh, uh, the, Kaduna now. Yes, now. As the AFAC is coming, is deducted. It's deducted as source directly. And that is what, and when you ask, and that was when I started, I said, everything is not witch hunting. Mm. No. The fact is not about witch hunting. Oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah. fact is, the fact is there. They just tell you, this is what the book is. Okay, Mr. Governor, what you are saying is not true. These are the facts. I'll bring my own facts. This was how much I left. This was how much I left. This was how much I brought. We are talking of um, a loan of $587 million and $85 billion naira. Go and let us even do an arithmetic times of five hundred and eighty-seven million dollars mm. loan. You know how much that is? Uh, yeah, with the current, with, with, with the what we have now at that time, at what was as of four sixty, probably four sixty. The official they were using then. Aye. Now you are talking about over one. So how will he be able to? So the man has it, and the state has of assembly say we want to. Book. The son is abusing. The son of verify is abusing. Threatening speakers, threatening house of assembly. That is how no how it's done. Mm. No. The state does not belong to the man. 
the one that is currently here, uh, Governor Sani, when he leaves tomorrow, someone that is calling him, also called him. Oh, yeah. That's what it's supposed to be. Oh, yeah. And that is what it they, should be. They, so it's not a personal they, issue. They say it's turn by turn. Now turn by the class five, not turn by turn. <laughs> <laughs> now, joining us from our Abuja studio will be a member of the Kaduna State House of Assembly. He represents the Kaora constituency, Honorable Yusuf Mugu. I greet you, Honorable. How are you? How are I'm you? trying to do fine here. Hello. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what new can you tell us? What's going on? Because people are saying that... Um, uh, the former governor, El Rufa, is being targeted that this is political. What really is going on? Why does the House want to look at this issue? There is nothing political in the scenario of Kaduna State. Uh, it's a pity that uh, it is happening that way. To me and to those who know the situation in Kaduna, but they are gone, governor, and then the president, the serving governor, uh, believed to be friends, brothers, allies. But what is happening is paradoxical. It's a paradox. And uh, what we are experiencing in Kaduna is a vicarious experience. Whereas you find two brothers, two friends, and one is now saying, this is what I'm passing through as a result of the management abilities of my predecessor. Therefore, what is happening is not political. Issue of loans are facts and figures. And the governor, for a governor to cry out, to say that I can no longer pay salaries conveniently. I cannot go into capital projects that will affect and affect the lives of the people of Kaduna say positively, then it's a big problem. And so the house cannot sit and watch. We are just trying to say, let's do our legitimate or play our legitimate roles find out why the loans are in sort a quantum. 587 million dollars, right? 85 billion naira, 115 contractual liabilities, are heavy indebtedness. And therefore, if you put all those figures or those amounts of money vis-a-vis -vis on an average of say 100 naira, I mean 1,000 naira per dollar today, those figures would not be what you are seeing on the books. Mm. So as an assembly, and moved by the passionate appeal of the governor for assistance. We don't know wherever it will come from. We felt touch as an assembly and that we cannot sit and watch. And it behooves on me, Honorable Mugu Yusuf, representing the good people of Kaura constituency, as the chairman, public accounts committee, seen the books, I've seen the books, the audit books, and the audit annual reports, I had no option but to move that motion. That the accounts, the loans, the expenses be investigated. And this action is backed by law. Section 103 empowers any state house of assembly to put in place a committee to investigate any matter. Section 128 empowers the house of assembly to investigate any entity 
be it an individual, be it a group, be it a ministry, a department, or agency, which the house has power to appropriate money to, so that we play our oversight functions. Oversight function means we approve X, Y, Z amount of money for you for a specific purpose. We are going back to check whether the money was used for the purpose it was meant for. And this is the simple logic behind it. In the event that some of these monies appropriated were not properly utilized or misapplied or misappropriated, the house had a duty to ask anybody involved to return such monies so that the financial situation of the state can be restructured and positively be put in place so that the state can move. As it is, Kaduna State is in a precarious situation financially and in a state of comatose financially. It will take the grace of God. Let me ask you for a state to move forward. Let me ask you. You said you've been privileged to look at the books. Um, audit, audit books. Report, uh, yes, audit books. Yeah, yeah. Give me an idea of what you saw. Are you suggesting that some of the projects tied to those loans were not executed, badly executed, or were non-existent? What really is going on? What did you find out? Well, the, the public outcry outcry, and the seeming perception of an average citizen of Kaduna State seem to suggest that a lot of projects are not even going on. They seem to have been abandoned. If you take a day, two days, one month without seeing a contractor on site, the money was allocated for purpose and the purpose is not achieved, then we can infer that probably the contractor must have absconded, or there can be some uh, sinister actions surrounding the project or the contract. And that is why I don't want to preempt the outcome of the investigation. Let's go there and see. In the event that our investigation revealed that the Argon administration indeed properly utilize the money for the purpose they were meant for, then there have been no cause for alarm. But in the event that such were not, we will ask for the money to be returned to the coffers of the state so that the current administration can be functional. Okay, Honorable, please. The pro panel has been empowered to invite uh, Governor, former Governor Erufai and speakers of the 8th and 9th Assembly. Is that still on? Well, I, I, I would not know the committee, though I'm a member of the committee, the vice chairman of the committee, but it, it, when we get there, I don't want to we'll cross the when we get there. If some issues require that he be invited, he'll be so invited. But I think we are looking more at the ministries, departments, and agencies and then contractors that handle such you know, projects or such contracts. So that we'll go on site, we'll definitely go physically to look at the level of work. If it means looking for professional advice as to the work done and how much have been paid, if we are not satisfied, we invite whoever is involved. The rule of law must be observed and must be respected. And what we are doing is a product of separation of powers. The executive proposed and bring the budget for us and we approve and appropriate monies. We have a duty to go back and check whether the money we have been given, I mean we gave, we are properly utilized. Yes, uh, Honorable, uh, <coughs> the speaker was quoted as saying that um, uh, there was some level of intimidation and threats um, to his person. Uh, uh, to his person, um, 
by some elements uh, in Cardinal State. How true is that? And there will be seen some uh, clips and screenshots of some WhatsApp messages that was allegedly sent to the speaker. Can you clarify on those issues? I think I saw some tweet messages uh, which are alluded or are suspected to have been messages from the, the son of the immediate past governor, specifically a serving member of the National Assembly. From what I have seen from those tweets, in one of them, the Kaduna National Assembly was described as a useless assembly. Uh, that being the case, this is taking a different dimension. As far as we are concerned, we have nothing to do with him except and except otherwise, he was part of the, 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 the contractors, but I do not know him as a commissioner. I didn't know him as a member of the assembly. I didn't know him as having or holding any position. If the issues are talking about the governor of the state, the institution of the governor has nothing to do with the individual, but then there must be an individual in that office at every point in time. Incidentally, if it was his father in the office within the period in view, I don't think this thing has to do with him. And I don't think he has the right to call an assembly, an institution, headed by the speaker and describe it as useless assembly. We will advance our own search and we'll write the National Assembly, thank God he's a, a, a legislator and a serving a member in the National Assembly. Is it really the uh, federal lawmaker that uh, uh, House of Representatives member or, or the his brother? House of House of Representatives. Well, I don't know whichever among them, but all of them. That's why I say I don't know which but among. I but I think one. from what I heard, they said uh, the member of the National Assembly. Yeah, because people sometimes. If he is not, but it is his brother. Yes, because people sometimes confuse Belo. Confuse the two, two Belo and Bashir. Yeah. Yes, and, uh, and uh, so whoever among them, but they are they are definitely that. children of let's the immediate past that. governor. Let's leave that. People as a Kaduna indigent, somebody familiar with um, with the states. Do you agree with the claim that there are so many abandoned projects, especially in this area? Area, is, is is this true or just a fabrication by um, political? It is enemies? not a belief. The issue is not a belief. If a project is ongoing and you see it stop, people can say it is abandoned. But let me also say this in fairness: the past administration, you know, initiated a lot of projects, very good projects for that matter. But the fear of the citizenry is on why those old projects were really, you know, done based on specified monies allocated to them, inflated, or that some of the contractors collected the monies and disappeared. Okay. And whoever signs such contracts have a responsibility to bring them back to site. It can be factual, and it can be definitely investigated, and that's the essence of the investigation. So how does Governor Sane run the state when the state is in such a precarious situation? Where does he find the money? Are you people putting heads together uh, to help him navigate these uh, treacherous uh, uh, waters? For us to take the pains of moving such emotion, for us as an assembly under the leadership of the speaker, Honorable Liman, to put in the committee, the 13 man committee or 13 persons committee, it means we are serious and we are ready to assist him find solution. Take for instance, if at the end of the investigation, there are those or people indicted, and if we are able to use the law to enforce the law and they bring back the money, 
Yeah, the current governor will have some money to perform some functions for the state. But it's a pity. Uh, we have advised the governor to look outside the box because it does not also even appear that even have an opportunity to take even another loan, even if he desires to do that to help the state. Because we are owing so much, and what we are owing for any responsible bank or any country or any agency, I don't think any would find it reasonable to allow Kaduna State to go into a deal of taking another loan. If our fact will give us about uh, 10 billion and only 3 point something billion will come into the cover as net to Kaduna State, it's a sympathetic situation. Yes, it needs uh, intervention. Uh, Yes. But can some of these loans be restructured? Is it possible to restructure them and come up with a more favorable in, payment plan? Incidentally, my humble self here in the studio talking, I'm not an expert in accounting or auditing. I've not even never been a contractor to even know how perhaps if you take all that. I've never been you know, such huge loans that I know that if you take it can be restructured. But if such avenues are there, we'll advise the governor to explore such. Yes, as I was asking, um, after your finding, the State House of Assembly doesn't have uh, power for enforcement. Um, you still have to present your uh, recommendations to um, the relevant agencies. How, uh, how are you sure that whatever recommendations that you make uh, will be... Uh, uh, will be executed by the relevant authorities in making sure that um, if there is any, because all these things are within the realms of allegations, as it were, um, that there are money yeah, to there are allegations. Uh, we, yes, they are, yeah, yes, there they are, are allegations. The yes. Yeah, so how do we enforcement? There must be such money. Well, if 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 the facts and figures prove, and there is no contention about that that indeed some monies were misappropriated. The relevant agencies, they, they, let me say this clearly, that the office of the governor has enormous powers. Unless otherwise what we are doing, if we are at variance with the thinking of the current governor and his team, in that circumstance, our investigation can be frustrated. But if we have a seamless you know, relationship, though different arms of government be working in the interest of one single state, and we are talking about progress of the state, I think we will make sure that the executive arm of government utilize whichever agency or relevant agency that enforces, you know, the law. But if the rule of law is, uh, again, not to be observed, but the assembly would have been seen to have done its own bit and would have demonstrated our commitment based on the odds we took, during our swearing in. All right, Honorable Mugu, we cannot but thank you enough and uh, wish you well. We wish you well. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Okay. So th that was uh, Honorable Yusuf Mugu. He uh, is, by definition, Chairman of the Public Accounts Committee of the Kaduna State House of Assembly. Uh, gentlemen, we he has told us what there is to know. Yes. Mm. It's, um, you know, when Governor Sane addressed the people, he mm. said, look, this is the situation that I found myself. And we discussed the matter here. I was full of pity because I imagined myself, there you are many should. things that you will not know until mm. you get to office. That's it. There are many things. Oh, yeah. In oh, fact, yeah. somebody was telling me that when the president said, Subsidy is gone. He didn't know that we didn't have as much money in our foreign reserves as had been painted. He <laughs> took J.P. Morgan to tell us that, look, it's not true that you have, you have that much. So right. We are owing, we are owing uh, J.P. Morgan and others some money that were collateralized with foreign reserves. So... You are coming into office, you may not have all the information. Now, is there, is in a 
precarious situation to run the state is a problem. All because right. how do you have maybe a salary bill of five billion and you and mm. you got three billion after all deductions? Oh, come on. What are you going to do with it? Won't you clear refuse? Won't you do other things? Won't you fix roads? Health. All right, it's, it's gentlemen, time. Time is a master. So, mm. it's uh, as is, we have opened the book in the manner of speaking. That, so, we leave the rest to the judgment of the viewer. You've heard it. Uh, CK Wando, many thanks Terrible. for your time. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, when you take on governance, you also look at you take the liability okay. <laughs> and the assets. Yeah, assets. All right. Uh, liabilities must it. not kill the person. But the liability must not kill oh, yeah. the person. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. So that's our show for, for today. If you missed any part of it, not to worry. Join us later tonight at 11 for a repeat broadcast. And of course, uh, to inform you, we are also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. And so on behalf of uh, uh, Jide Otitoju, Chris Wandu, and the Backroom Boys, I say thank you for watching. Bye-bye now.